kuona mtu ambaye kabla of the king amnyoshaji um, wa mfalme in the book of nehemiah kana kitabu cha nehemiah ya nehemiah be, be, chapter 2 verse 1 going home anehemia mstari wa sura ya pili na ule mstari wa wa kwanza hadi kuendelea we can see there nehemiah he met with his, his king tunaweza kuona pale kwamba nehemia alikutana mfalme his 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 face was looking as a sad face a sad face au uso wake ulionekana wenye huzuni sana before the king mfalme but because king was because king was knowing very well nehemia kwa sababu mfalme alikuwa anamjua vizuri sana nehemia he was a faithfulness a servant alikuwa ni mtumishi mwaminifu and he was doing all his activity faithfulness alikuwa anafanya kazi zake kwa uaminifu so that day he wandered siku ile alishangaa although though was a king ingawa alikuwa ni mfalme but he wonder how come alishangaa imekujaje this man become today sad person siku ya leo mtu huyu kuwa mtu wa huzuni that day nehemiah was getting information according to getting information to his city which is in capital because he was in capital kwa sababu mfalme aliweza kupata habari hii kulingana kwa sababu Nehemia alikuwa katika utumwa. Nehemia was getting information from his city which he was coming for. Yeah. Nehemia alikuwa na, amepata habari katika mji ambao alikuwa anatoka kwa sababu alikuwa ni mtumwa. So he went to his king while he, he was having he was full of sad. Alienda kwa mfalme kwa sababu ndani yake kulikuwa kumejaa huzuni. As you know once you were in captive kama unavyojua unapokuwa katika hali katika utumwa you, are, you don't have any authority you don't have you, you cannot do your will hawezi hawezi kwa na mamlaka hawezi kufanya kitu kulingana na mapenzi yako you will do the thing which they will command you to do au utafanya vitu ambavyo vitakuamuru wewe kufanya they will command you to do watakuamuru wewe kufanya because you are under them kwa sababu uko chini yao so here because he, Uh, Nehemiah was a faithful man. Hapa tunaona Nehemia alikuwa mtu mwaminifu. He get, he got in favor from his king. Alipata neema kutoka kwa mfalme. He, 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 he the king allowed him to back to his city so that he can build the walls of his city. Uh, mfalme Nehemia aliweza mfalme aliweza kumhusu Nehemia kubaki pale kwa kuwa angeweza kujenga mji wake. He allowed him to go back to his city alimruhusu yeye kurudi katika mji wake so that he can build the wall of his city angeweza kujenga ukuta wa mji wa mji wake how come the one who took you as a captive to allow him to go back to your city or to your place which you are coming from na kujaje mtu anapokuruhusu kurudi katika mji ambapo unatoka because he was faithful servant before the king kwa sababu alikuwa ni mtu mwaminifu kwa mfano wake the bible tells us he was capable of the king abibi nasema kwamba alikuwa ni mtu ambaye ni nyoshaji kwa mfano he was faithful in his work alikuwa mtu mwaminifu kwa kazi yake he was bring everything on time alikuwa anaita vitu kwa wakati because he was knowing what he, he must to do alikuwa anachua kitu ambacho kinampasa kufanya May God help us. As a Christian as a church, kama washirika, kama wakristo au kanisa, we must be faithful in our activity in the church. Lazima tuwe watu waaminifu katika kazi ndani ya kanisa. Though we have a lot of things which surrounding in our daily life, ingawa tuna vitu ambavyo vinatuzunguka sana katika maisha yetu, but we suppose to be faithful a Christian. Lakini inatupasa tuwe watu waaminifu without a faithful pasipo aminifu no connection between us and god hakuna muunganiko katikati yetu na mungu once we don't have connection tunapokosa muunganiko the god will separate from us to him mungu ataweza kutoka sehemu yetu hata ataweza kutuacha so we supposed to be faithfulness in our daily life kwa hiyo inatupasa tu watu waaminifu katika maisha yetu as we are servants of god kama watumishi wa mungu you know without faithfulness au unajua pasipo waaminifu even other the who are living outside the, on the world hata watu ambao wanaishi nje au nje ya ukristo 
they cannot always agree our things which we are doing. Hawezi kukubali yale ambayo tunayofanya. Because them say what are they is they are learning through us. Ah hata wao wanajifunza kupitia sisi. So if we are not faithful, kama sisi sio waaminifu, they we cannot preach to them. Hatuwezi kuahubiria. Even Jesus says if you will be faithful to the little things I will arise you to the higher things. Ah hata Yesu anasema kwamba kama utakuwa mwaminifu kwa kidogo basi utakuwa mwaminifu kwa kikubwa. So the faithfulness is starting to the foundation. Ah uh, waaminifu unaanzia chini. So you will start going and growing and growing. Au utazidi kuendelea na kukua na kukua. So we need the people who can be faithful in the activity in the church. Atunahitaji watu walio waaminifu katika kazi ya kanisa. Kama wewe ni mwanadamu, if you are a singer, kama wewe ni mwimbaji, you must sing faithfully. Lazima uimbe kwa uaminifu. If you are a preacher, kama wewe ni mhubiri, if you are a pastor, kama wewe ni mchungaji, if you are a pastor, kama wewe ni mtume, if you are a man of prayer, kama wewe ni mtu wa maombi, you must deal with your duty faithfulness. Lazima uwe mwaminifu katika kazi hii. Because hiyo. God has given us different gifts. Ah, uh, tunajua Mungu ametupa karama tofauti everyone according to his will god give ah kila mmoja kulingana na namna Mungu atakavyo in the book of exodus chapter 20 verse 18 ah kwenye kitabu cha kwa kitabu cha kutoka mstari wa 20 hadi 19 in the book of exodus chapter 20 ah kutoka sura ya 20 verse 19 mstari wa 19 there we can see Moses was speaking with his people haya tunaweza kuona kwamba Musa alikuwa anazungumza na watu wake ah these people were murmuring ah watu hao walikuwa wanalalamika they were need to speak with the god because always Moses was bring a commanding from god to them kwa sababu walikuwa wanahitaji kuzungumza na Mungu kwa sababu Musa alikuwa anapata amri toka kwa Mungu na kuwapa wao. So that, that day they say no, who so, are you? Ah uh, siku ile walisema hapana, wewe ni nani? Always you are coming from you are coming with your way you say God has, has spoken to you. Ah uh, kwa sababu kila siku nakuja na neno lako nasema kwamba Mungu amezungumza na wewe. Today I want to speak with your God. Na sisi leo tunahitaji kuzungumza na Mungu wako. Once God was Moses went to the mountain, mara Musa alipokwenda alipopanda mlimani, he speak with God, aliongea na Mungu tell him the people they want to speak with you akamwambia Mungu kwamba watu hao wanahitaji kuzungumza na wewe and the God allowed me him to bring them when they make agreement which time they can meet with them na Mungu akawa amekubaliana naye kwamba walete hao watu waweze kuzungumza naye but once the presence God the presence of God were come mara utukufu wa Mungu ulipokuwa umekuja not God himself Mungu mwenyewe not God sio Mungu mwenyewe his presence presence only yani ule utukufu wa Mungu tu they they feeling they cannot be able to to to, to stand in that place ah uh, wakaona kwamba hawezi kusimama katika nafasi hiyo so, mahali pale so in this verse which we which i mentioned ah uh, katika mstari ile ambayo nimeweza kuzungumza here those people they agree they said ah uh, hao watu waweza kukubali na kusema You go and speak with your God. Wakasema neno zungumze na Mungu wako. Then you will come to us to tell what God is speak to us. Na pia utakuja kutuambia kile ambacho Mungu amezungumza na wewe. We need to be a faithful man servant of God. Tunahitaji kwa watu watumishi wa Mungu waaminifu. Here more, here Moses was a faithful man. Hapa Musa alikuwa ni mtu mwaminifu. He deals with his duty properly. Alishughulikia, alishughulikiana na ile kazi yake alikuwa nayo according to the will of God kulingana na yale mapenzi ya Mungu let us read the last verse to the book of Corinthians so let us have a story of mission to talk about the book of Corinthians yes first Corinthians Corinto wa kwanza chapter 4 sura ya 4 and the verse 1 to verse 2 and sura ya kwanza hadi ya 2 tayari wao wanataka verse to read Bibi nasema mtu na tuhesabu hivi kuwa tu watumishi wa Kristo na mawakili wa siri za Mungu. Hapo tena inayohitajika na hitajiwa katika mawakili ndio mtu aonekane kuwa mwaminifu. We are servants of God. Sisi kama watumishi wa Mungu. We are kept secret of God. Atumebeba siri za Mungu. We must be faithful preacher and as 
lazima tuwe wa wa, wa, umbili, wa, wa mniki, because god has put in his words in our life sababu Mungu anaweka maneno yake ndani so we must be faithful servants lazima tuwe watu wa the faithful is starting in our in our society which we are coming for uaminifu uh, unaanzia katika jamii ambayo tunatoka i mean the family which we are living na maanisha kwamba family ambayo tunaishi so we are coming also in the church na ndio maana tunakuja kanisa if we if we are not faithful in the if we are not faithful in the in, in our family kama utakuwa uaminifu ndani ya familia even the church you cannot be faithful hata ndani ya kanisa huwezi kuwa uaminifu so we must teach our children lazima tuwafundishe watoto wetu but we must be a model lazima tuwe watu ambao wa mfano a model of showing others how we are faithful a kuonyesha yani tuonyeshe mfano Here Paul was just explaining how faithfulness for servants of God. And he mentioned the character, some character of faithfulness servant. We justified to be righteousness. Yes. So after doing these things you can become a good a servant of God and God can use you wherever he want. Akupitia hivi vitu tunaweza tukawa Mungu akatuonyesha namna ambavyo tunahitaji kuwa. May God help us. Mungu atusaidie sana. May God help us. Mungu atusaidie sana. I beg you to stand. Anaomba tusimame so that we can can ask our God na tunaweza tunaweza kumwomba Mungu he so that he can enable us to be faithfulness to his work anaweza kutufanya kuwa waaminifu kwa kazi yake remember we read the book of jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1 ah mungu atumesema kwa kitabu cha yeremia sura ya 5 au sura ya 5 and uh, measured his verse uh, uh, the book of of, of, of nehemiah and nikaweza tena kutaja kitabu cha nehemiah we have to see how he was as a cup bearer of the king ah namna ambavyo alikuwa mshaji wa mfalme but also in the book of exodus, exodus chapter 20 verse 18 na na tumeona tena katika kitabu cha kutoka sura ya 20 verse 18 how moses was receiving order from god to bring to the people of israel namna ambavyo musa alikuwa anapokea uh, anapokea maagizo kutoka kwa mungu na kuleta juu kwa watu kwa watu wake as we a church na kama kanisa in the book of colossians chapter 